So, uh, here we have the last hurrah of the whole salaryman thing. Until I bring it back again. <laughs> uh, obviously, Joe Salaryman as a character and his kids were, were a huge hit, uh, which I was, I was very grateful for. But I also definitely got the distinct impression that if I kept on using them all the time, they would start to get pretty annoying. Uh, so when I had the idea for this scene, which uh, is just a totally, obviously, pieced together scene of clips from different scenes, uh, which I, I had not really done before, uh, at least outside of, like, the Zod and Phil specials in Berserk. So uh, <laughs> I don't know why the older Salaryman brother is just kind of standing in front of the doorway to the bathroom the whole time while they're all having this conversation, I guess. But whatever. Um, <laughs> so I decided, okay, I'll do this. But that's it. <laughs> Gantz has to kill all the salaryman, all the all the members of the salaryman family, and they will not come back again. So <laughs> there's that. God knows people are annoying. Why do I keep bringing them back? They are pretty annoying, <laughs> but people seem to like them. I think I think uh, that's got to be my number one most requested cameo. Is the salary <laughs> is the salary man character because you really can just throw him into any random situation with any character who looks vaguely like a Japanese guy with glasses and it'll pretty much work uh, this was another one that I I went through a lot of different versions in my head at first it was gonna be Seinfeld that he was watching um, no particular reason other than that Seinfeld is awesome um, but then I, I hit upon the spoilers idea, that would be what he does to antagonize Clucky. Um, and then, and so then I had to think, okay, okay, but what's something that's a spoiler that I can have him say, uh, that's old enough that I can get away with it and I won't be, actually be spoiling the audience. Um, and so for a while I thought about, you know, the whole Luke, I am your father thing, but... I thought that was too old. Like, it doesn't matter if you're an alien. You can't not know that. That doesn't count as a spoiler anymore. Badass. So, who's there the you go. Dick, <laughs> I, I figured Fight Club uh, struck the perfect no, balance, where Jake really, Kono. if you don't know that by now, fuck you, go rent it. About? Now, because no, it's awesome. Oh, God. Uh, it hurts my uh, eyes. Uh, Look at the smoke. Uh, uh, <laughs> goes back and forth and it jumps around and oh god um and you would that you would think that would be one of those things that I'd look at now and think oh hey you know I bet I could redo that scene now in Vegas and it would look way better uh but then I used that clip for the uh the whole um uh um Satirius Johnson music video and and I tried it in Vegas, and I realized, wow, no, I really can't do that much better of a job in Vegas. Since Corona's arm passes right in front of the smoke, I can't just crop that out and use, yeah. Not not to get too technical into the <laughs> technical aspects of editing. But, yeah. So this whole scene here, like the final fight with, um, with Clucky, I think fell really flat with a lot of people. Um, and I think part of that is that I kind of painted myself into a corner. At the end of the last episode, I built, you know, Clucky up as this huge, intimidating villain. Which was really just there as, you know, as set up for the reveal that he's Clucky. Uh, and then... But I think people, like, took that as a big build-up for this fight and thought that it was would be this big dramatic thing, and then when it wasn't, they were disappointed, which I can sort of understand. Um, I think the other half of that is that, looking at it now, I realized, oh god, I should have put so... I should have used more sound effects and more music. And it would have been way better. Uh, I, I think that it could have looked exactly the same and been edited exactly the same, and with with some music going on in the background, some nice action music, and some uh, and some better sound effects, some whooshing as he flies through the air and all that stuff. It could have been way better, which which I definitely got better at doing later in Gantz, especially in the Buddha arc. Um, but then in, in Escaflone, I think, is really where I came into my own in being able to edit an action scene, especially audio-wise, and making it pop, really making it work, so. Oh, well. This kind of bit me in the ass later, too, when I... 
<laughs> uh, did the math later on as though he'd actually gotten those 38 points when, I guess, technically whatever Gantz didn't give them to him, but whatever. This, this I wasn't sure about, because in the, in the original, he calls him, uh, he calls him Fag. But, I don't know, I think that worked in the original, some people were surprised that I didn't keep that when I do keep so much from the original. But, I don't know, I think that works in the original where it's not a comedy, but I don't, I think it just doesn't stand out very much. That, I mean, there's just not much of a joke to it, like, everyone thinks he's gay. And you're not sure if he's gay or not. La di da. I don't know. I mean, yeah, whatever. It's fine when it comes out of nowhere and it's just kind of funny and silly, but it's not really a joke. It's just. It's raining, man. Hallelujah. <laughs> Corona wishes that Kishimoto would react like that to seeing him fall out of the sky at her feet. <laughs> not. Not happening. <laughs> Alright, take it easy. See y'all later.